This is going to be a sad story. Uh, the early morning of May the 28th, 1997, Leroy Iverson stops at the Prima Donna Casino. He wants to get a room for the night. As you cross the California-Nevada border, uh, you'll see a few casinos about 50 miles southwest of Las Vegas. Now he has his seven-year-old daughter, her name is Cherise, and he also has a 14-year-old son. His name's Harold. Uh, this was close to the uh, Memorial Day weekend and all the rooms are sold out, so uh, Leroy decides to uh, gamble. Now this is early, early morning hours and he wants to gamble and have a few drinks. So what he does, he sends Sharice and her brother Harold over to the arcade area because in Nevada, uh, underage uh, children, if you're under age 21, you're not allowed to be in the gaming area. So he shoes them off over to the arcade in the wee, wee early morning hours. Uh, also visiting the Prima Donna are two teenagers by the name of Jeremy Strohmeyer and David Cash. Uh, they're from Long Beach, California. And uh, Cash's father is gambling, so Strohmeyer and Cash, they're underage too, and they're not allowed in the gaming or area. So what they do is they're wandering around. Uh, a couple of teenagers, if you can imagine, they're just bored to death, looking for things to do. Uh, there is some casino surveillance uh, footage of them across the street. There's a casino across the street uh, called Whiskey Pete's, which is right across uh, Interstate 15. Uh, but they eventually wander back to the Prima Donna and they make their way to the arcade area. And this is where they run into Charisse. Uh, Brother Harold, uh, nobody seems to know about his whereabouts during this time. But I want to tell you a little about uh, Jeremy Strohmeyer. A young guy that's got lots of problems. He's got an alcohol problem, drug problem, pornography problem, uh, namely child porn. After he was arrested, they found child porn on his uh, desktop at home. So this guy, uh, this guy's just a mess. So what happens is uh, there's some surveillance footage of Sharice and Jeremy playing hide and go seek around the arcade machines. Now this is where when uh, Jeremy says to Sharice, "Hey." Hey, if you run into the ladies' restroom, that'd be a great hiding spot because I'm not allowed in there. So she runs inside the restroom to hide from Jeremy. There's some surveillance footage that shows him going in, following her into the ladies' room. I'll bring that in to share too. I also go in to the ladies' room uh, too. I'll share that video with you as well. So as he enters the ladies' washroom, uh, they start throwing wet paper wads at each other. There's also a wet floor sign. You know those yellow signs you see? Uh, she picks that up and hurls it at him and hits him in the forearm. Uh, this angers him so somewhat. So he drags her back to the uh, handicap stall towards the back of the restroom. And this is where he molests her. This, this sicko is just, it, it just makes you sick what this guy did. So he drags her back there. Uh, he takes her boots off, her pants, her underwear. And he, uh, this sicko digitally rapes her. You know, the, just, just a sick, sick punk. Um... Also at this time, uh, David Cash walks into the restroom and he stands up on the, the toilet uh, next uh, to the handicap stall and he taps Jeremy on the head and it kind of knocks his cap off and they, they, lock, they look at each other and uh, Cash uh, jumps down leaves. This is when he becomes a bad Samaritan. 
Bad Samaritan, another punk. So uh, a little bit later, there's two ladies that enter the restroom. Uh, Jeremy covers Sharice's mouth so she can't make any noise. After the ladies leave, uh, he chokes her, uh, strangles her, uh, snaps her neck. He continues to molest her, snaps her neck. Also, his testimony was that uh, she was still making noise, so he takes his left arm on her shoulder and his right arm, and he, um, and he breaks her neck. At this point, uh, uh, she's silent and doesn't make a move. Man, this, this guy needs to burn forever in prison. Well, just makes me sick. But... Uh, Anyway, um, anyway, they leave, and they uh, he he leaves uh, Sharice back in the handicap stall and props her up on the toilet, and and they uh, they leave the casino. They get in a car with Cash's father. Eventually, head to Las Vegas. Now, about 5:30 a.m., uh, Leroy Iverson is done gambling. And he goes to the arcade looking for Cherise. She's not there. Harold's there. They can't find Cherise. So they go to the security area and ask, uh, have they seen a little girl? A little seven-year-old girl. So security is on a search for her. And they uh, finally check the restroom and they find her deceased in the back. Man. So uh, Jeremy goes on to um, to confess to this murder, and um, he's serving life in prison without the possibility of parole. Now the crybaby, crybaby now is um, uh, claiming that. Uh, Claiming that uh, he didn't mean to hurt her, didn't mean to kill her. So because of this, he should be um, set free and put on probation, if you can believe that. Now I bring in some surveillance footage. Also stick with me to the end because I'll share with you what, what the uh, restroom looked like as it looks today. Here you see Cherise playing, uh, kind of hiding from uh, Jeremy. She goes into the ladies' room. Jeremy right after her. David Cash enters next. Two minutes later, you see David Cash exiting right here. Jeremy exits 22 minutes later after he murders Cherise. I found some old footage of where the arcade was located. It's kind of hard to find and... Nobody will really help you. I knew I was in the right area from the elevators here on the right, the windows on the left. This was a hopping place back in the day. This is the arcade. Uh, today it's full of exercise equipment. It's been changed uh, somewhat. Uh, this is for the hotel, for the guests, the exercise room. Uh, this is what it looks like down inside. Okay, now I'm going into the women's restroom and I'm just hoping that there's no ladies in here. Can you imagine a guy with a camera in a ladies restroom? But this front area is where they were throwing wet paper, wet paper towels at each other. Uh, eventually he grabs her up, takes her back uh, to the stall, back to the handicap stall. And this is where he attacks her and assaults her. Looking above would be Dave Cash, his friend. Now this is Dave Cash's view. Uh, he testified he looked up over into the next stall. He sees Jeremy assaulting Sharice. He said he tapped him on the head and kind of knocked his hat off. She's left for dead. Oh, it just just makes me sick. And 
And now I'm hoping no ladies walk in. What do you say? Let's head out to Inglewood, California, where Sharice is buried and pay our respects. I'll be there in about five hours. You'll be there in just a couple of seconds. Okay, we made it up here on the left. We'll find Sharice Iverson. Happened back May the 25th, 1997. Space number 41. 28 it looks like so if you come to uh, Inglewood Memorial Park I look for these skinny palm trees and she's right here I remember like it was yesterday. Sad, sad story. <laughs> 